Everybody have a great Christmas? Good, good, good. Um, we, are, we are doing something a little bit different today. You may have noticed if you've been here before, we've got uh, all the kids are in here and teachers. Uh, we've got everybody together. Normally on a Sunday morning, uh, we have children's church. Uh, they never even come in here. They're really happy about that typically. Uh, but today we just felt like it'd be good. We're going to have a little shorter service today. Um, and have our family together, our church family and all our families together. So it's a good thing. Um, so kids next week will be back to normal children's church, and they love it. Uh, this guy's do an amazing job up there with them. And uh, so um, today's sermon is Remember When. And uh, honestly, I had a different sermon planned for this week until Tuesday morning. And I normally plan ahead at least, at least two or three or four weeks or sometimes more. At this point, I'm actually plan, I plan through February, which is really good. Now, that's, but I, I've always said, if God wants us to change what we think we should do, then we're going to do it. And that's on a moment's notice. So, you know, if, if even on Sunday morning, if we feel like God wants us to go in a different direction, we'll go. We're not so stuck in our, our schedule. I don't ever want to be that way. And so Tuesday morning... Um, as I'm reading over my other sermon and my notes, God's like, save it till next week. Save it till next week. I'm like, really? <laughs> I've been preparing for this. I've got it ready. I've had my slides ready for two weeks and, and everything. And he's like, yeah, save it for next week. So I just don't question him. He knows why. He knows why I need to share that message next week. So next week we're going to talk about the missing Jesus that Jesus is missing, and so that's, that's just a little preview next week. But today, we're going to talk about remember when, and I thought about this, I just think it really does make more sense because here we are at the end of the year. Um, most of you have already had your Christmas time with your family. A lot of you have either traveled to family or had them come to you, and, and some are still doing that. Our kids and grandkids are all coming to our house today, first time we've had them all together in months. Um, actually, the first time we've had them all together just by ourselves without a bunch of other family around. And our oldest son, who's coming from Charlotte, they're here, um, or they're over in Cleveland, hasn't even been to our new house yet. So we're really excited about this afternoon with our kids and grandbabies. And, I, and it never fails. I'm sure this is true with your family. Whenever family gets together, don't you start talking about the old times? And remember when... So-and-so did this. Remember when you did that? And then they start saying, yeah, but remember when you did that and you, you looked really stupid, and you're right. And our kids do this every time. I promise you this afternoon, the stories will start flying between our three kids about all the stuff they did to each other and with each other over and over again. And they'll laugh, and then they'll get, act like they're mad, but they're not really mad, you know. And it's, and it's just great, honestly. But I remember when all that was happening when they were young, and it wasn't so fun. They were fighting all the time. And our two sons would fight so much that when we would go on a trip, we would have to put Ashley, our daughter, in the middle so they wouldn't fight. And they would still fight over her going down the road. And so she's in the middle having two boys fighting over her all the time going on a trip. It was just miserable. But now, when we get together, they laugh about it. They talk about it, and she's like, I always had to sit in the middle. I never got a window seat because you two idiots wanted to fight all the time. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's really cool how all that changes over time, isn't it? And we've all got our stories, and so I really do love this, this time of the year for those kind of reasons and any time we get together. When I, when I get together with my brother and sister, which is rare anymore, um, we talk about when we were kids, and my brother caught himself on fire. You want to hear that story? You want to hear that story real quick? We lived in the northern suburbs of Atlanta, DeKalb County, and we had a rare ice storm. This was back in the 70s. Kids, you don't even know what I'm talking about. I get it. Back in the 1970s, by the way, let me clarify that, we had a really bad ice storm. Some of you guys probably remember that, and, and even in Atlanta, it was awful. Power was out for, I think, maybe a week or two in Atlanta. It was awful. And so we were in our basement because it was the only place we had any heat. We had wood heat down there. Um, it was in the old days. It wasn't piped to the rest of the house. So we had to stay in the basement. We had a refrigerator, but it didn't work. But we had, it was so much ice down there, you know, we could put milk outside and stuff. But I'll never forget, we had candles everywhere. That was the days before cell phones when you had the landline, right? 
and the landline still works. So he, my brother is on the phone. I can't believe I'm telling this. He won't watch this, so it don't matter. <laughs> my brother is on the phone talking to a friend of his named Bobby. Never forget it. And he's, there's a candle on the steps going down to the basement. And he's on the phone, and this candle's right there. <laughs> and suddenly, he's on fire. And he goes, hold on, Bobby, I'm on fire. <laughs> and he puts the phone down. We're put, my sister and I were laughing so hard. My brother's on fire. Y'all are laughing. That's why I love this church. <laughs> and so we're laughing about him being on fire but it wasn't the fact that he was on fire. It was the fact that he had to say, hold on, I'm on fire. And so I, I never forget those memories. Isn't it cool that we can laugh and remember the old times, even though it could have been really bad, but we remember them with, with laughter and, and good things. And that's why I just think um, it's good to remember sometimes. It's good to remember. Even, even throughout the Bible, the Lord gives us a lot of instructions to remember um, I've got several scriptures. We'll go through them quick. You can just jot them down. Uh, First Corinthians, or First Chronicles, sixteen eight through twelve says, "Give thanks to the Lord, call on His name, make known among the nations what He has done. Sing to Him, sing praise to Him. Tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in His strength. Seek His face always. Remember the wonders He has done. His miracles." and the judgments he pronounced. Remember all the wonders he's done. Hadn't he done amazing things for you even this year? And listen, I get it. Some of you would say, you know, th you don't know how bad things are for me and my family right now, Mark. I understand that. But I'm, I'm challenging you today and myself to think back. The very fact that you are here today and alive and able to walk into this building means God has done something great for you this year. You can give him praise. It's for him. It's for him and about him. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 says, Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Now, that, you really need to go back and read that in context, but basically what the, King Solomon was writing this saying, listen, while you're young, remember what God has done for you because there will come a time when you think it's so bad that He hasn't done anything for you, which is what I was just talking about. So remember your Creator. And then Deuteronomy 6.12 says, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And this was Moses' direction to the Israelites for years and years, right? He kept on telling them, don't forget, remember the Lord, remember what He's done. Tell your kids, write it on the doorpost of your home. Never forget what God has done. And every year you should tell your kids what God has done. And I believe that's great instruction for us as parents and grandparents too, over and over we should tell our kids what God has done. Even if they say to us, I don't want to hear that. Even when they say, I don't care about that, I don't believe that, I don't, you know, whatever, it's just coincidence. Even if they reject you, continue to tell them what God has done for you. And we need to be reminded ourselves, don't we? That's the point of telling our kids and other people is that it also reminds us of what God has done. We're not just blessing them by telling them what God has done. We're reminding ourselves what God has done. In good times and hard times, though, we can forget God if we're not careful. Good times, we can think, hey, everything's great. I'm working hard. I got a good job, great family, you know, beautiful wife and kids, and everything's going good. We can tend to forget what God has done and the things He has brought us through. And the, on the other side, when things are really bad and times are bad, we think God has forgotten us. We think He doesn't care about us anymore. We think that He hasn't done anything for us. But like I said this morning, we're here because God allowed us to be here this morning. Those that are traveling have the blessing to be able to travel to see their family because God has allowed it. God remembers too. Did you know that? God has a good memory. Psalm 111.5 says, He provides food for those who fear Him, and He remembers His covenant forever. See, God made a promise to us that He would never leave us or ever forsake us. That's a promise from God. No matter what you might think or the circumstances you're in, God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never even turn my heart away from you. I'll always be there for you, and I'll always provide for you. But in a good way, God also forgets some things. Jeremiah 31, 34, God says, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Isn't that good news? 
Because I got a bunch of them. I don't know about y'all, but I got a bunch of sins that God had to forget. And I'm so thankful that he says, I, Mark, I don't remember your sins anymore. And when I go to him and say, God, I, there's times, I'll just be honest, there's times I remember some of the stuff I did many years ago and the guilt comes back. I don't know if any of y'all are like that, but sometimes the guilt will come back and I, and I feel like I need to re-repent to God. And, and God says, what are you talking about? I don't even remember that. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, th this morning, um, I'm reminded of the fact that we, on the 22nd of December, made nine months that Don and I have been here in Jasper at Living Word Church. We're so blessed. But I'm reminded of the fact that it's not anything that we've done. God sent us here. You guys accepted us and loved us. But this church, like any other church, would not happen without a bunch of people that help out without a bunch of people that sacrifice their money, their time, their effort, their talents, their gifts that God has given them. You've already seen the praise team this morning and the, and the fact that they serve and give of their time this morning. So this morning I want to do something a little bit different. And we don't have everybody here, but I'm going to ask those that volunteer to, to come up here. I want to honor them. I'm going to ask our praise team. If you guys, the praise team would come up and stand right here. Just, just, just come on. Anybody that serves on the praise team to come up. I'm going to ask anybody that serves in our children's ministry, including the nursery, if you serve in the nursery, your teacher, you volunteer in any way for the children's ministry, if you guys would come up here as well. I'm going to ask that anybody that serves in the student ministry, uh, which would include Keegan, who plays on our youth worship team, to come up. And I know we're missing some folks. You guys come as close to the front and line, line up all the way around there. I want, I want to get you guys all the way up here. You guys that serve in the media, which at this point is Brian, is the only one left back there. We have, we have others as well. Not everybody's here. I want you coming up here. People don't, don't see you very often. If you serve on our guest services or as an usher, I'd like for you to come up as well. If you serve on our prayer team, I'd like for you to come up. Anybody that serves on the prayer team? Now some of these folks are a part of several different ministries in case you didn't know. If you serve in the men's or women's ministry, I think they're already up here. Um, Sunday school, Bible study, they're probably already up here. Small group leaders, probably already up here. Are there any ministries I haven't thought of? Elders, deacons, elders and deacons. Most of them are already up here. What have I forgotten? Yeah, student ministries, that's right. These are the people with some others that are not here traveling, obviously. We're, we're missing a lot of folks today that serve week in and week out, many times rotating, so that we can have children's church on Sunday, so that this whole place is prayed over before you ever show up, that prepare lessons for children and students and take care of babies so that adults can come in here and, and enjoy the service. And I just want to say to you, I want to read to you this Scripture that honestly I felt like is absolutely how I feel. And for you guys that serve, and maybe you feel like you don't, do, you don't make a difference. What you do doesn't really matter. The Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6 would tell you different. And this is how I feel. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. And for you guys, it's often. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the Gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. What God has started with you guys serving in this church, He will complete it. And you are partners in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So every person that gets saved, every person that gets baptized, whether in this building or outside of this building, you have a partnership in that. 
You have fruit in that. And one day when you go to heaven, and Jesus is going to say to you, well done, my good and faithful service. There are many that have come into the kingdom because of your service. And I applaud you and I thank you. Can we give them a hand, please, folks? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys can go and be seated. I know that was kind of odd for them. They don't, these are folks that don't like the attention. <laughs> they don't want to stand up on front. They don't want anybody clapping for them. And that's great. Now, for a lot of you, and, and again, we have a small crowd today. For a lot of you, you would say, okay, um, I wasn't a part of that. that. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. That just means maybe a couple things. You haven't found where God wants you to serve yet. And I want to tell you ahead of time, the very first series we're going to do in January, January and February are going to be two amazing months here. You're going to get some very practical instruction in here from very, some great things that whether you believe in Jesus or not, honestly, you can walk out of here and say, that was helpful. That helps me at life. And that's what the very first series we're going to do is about going to be, I'm not sure of the title yet, but it's going to be about being healthy. Now, okay, first thought we have is, okay, I need to lose weight. It's first of the year, I need to have a New Year's resolution to lose some weight. <laughs> you want to freak out your wife, guys? Walk through the grocery store like this. <laughs> uh, I promise that's not a good idea. Uh, but anyway, but we're going to talk about being healthy physically, spiritually, emotionally. We're going to talk about having a healthy church. We're going to talk about having healthy relationships. And so one of these weeks, we're really going to focus on what a healthy church looks like. And the volunteers is where it's at. People just serving and giving of their gifts and their talents just for the glory of Jesus Christ. And so I'm so excited about that. And many of, you, many of you have already expressed interest. I want to serve. I want to be a part of the church. We're going to have a membership lunch in class on uh, January the 17th, right after the service. We'll serve lunch. If you're interested in any way, you just want to know anything about Living Word Church, sign up in the back. You don't have to join the church. It's just I want to know more. That's the day you need to be here, okay? And stay after. But many of you know that God has called you to something, and you're not sure what, but I believe that if you pay attention to what the Holy Spirit would say to you, He'll direct you in the right place. Maybe it's just a little passion in your heart. Maybe you would say, I just love little kids. Well, that may be a, a nudge from God to say, you need to serve in our children's or, or nursery. Maybe you'd say, I love, I love hanging around, you know, not the little kids, but the older kids. Maybe you need to serve uh, in, in the student ministries. Maybe you need to have a small group at home. Maybe you'd say, I love to do stuff in my home. I love to have a small group of people. This is not my thing to get up in front of talk a bunch of people. But I love being around people in my home. Maybe you can be a small group leader. We need, we need to do that. We're going to try to start some small groups by the 1st of February. But I promise there's a place for you to serve God. I promise you there, there is a place for you to serve God. What I'd like to do now is to have communion together. Now, I'm going to tell a little story on myself. I was in a bit of a rush this morning. And what many of you don't know is that we actually plan out our services. I give out an order of service to the media guys, to David, praise team leader, whoever, Daryl, or whoever's doing, and Donna doing announcements so they know kind of the order of what we think we should do. I was in a big hurry this morning. And over the weekend, I thought, we need to do communion. Come together in unity. It's a great picture of the church, you know, coming together. So we have bread and we have juice. And so I wrote on Steve's order of service at the bottom, I thought I wrote communion. And Steve came up to me and said, are we converted? I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And he shows me the piece of paper and it said communism. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, we're not communing, converting to communism. That's supposed to be communion. So we're not going to have communism. We're going to have communion this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 says, when, they had given thank, when he had given thanks, this is Jesus, he broke the bread and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So when we take this bread, Daryl and Eileen, if you guys would come. Um, and, and Lane, would you come? And Donna, maybe you guys take one station. We'll have two stations of communion. And so when you take the bread, remember Jesus. 
Remember what He did for you. Okay? Because He's done a lot for you. And this, He said, when you do this, anytime you do it, remember Me. And so we got to remember that Jesus' body was broken, just like the bread is broken. And then His blood was poured out. His blood was spilled for the forgiveness of our sin. So what we will do is you'll take a piece of bread, you'll just dip it in the juice, and remember, just look at it for just a second before you take it. And just remember what Jesus has done for you. Okay, and then we've got a video that's going to play during that. And as soon as we're done with communion, you can come as you feel led. As soon as we're done with that, we're going to have baptism. Okay, so, so come as you feel led.